Now that, my friend, is sick. What a treat. That's just like a little treat, that. Yes, people, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, I'm Liam from Good Bloke Outdoors. So in today's episode, we start in the Langdale area of the Lake District. This is a new area for me. Never been to this one before. And as always, we're gonna be doing a wild camp tonight. Now, I literally plotted this route out on my map about 45 minutes ago. The car park that I did aim to go to originally were full. So I had to dash that route and come up with something new. So I've checked online and hopefully this route that I've plotted will cover all of the Langdale Pikes. This is actually my third night in the Lake District consecutively. I've had a big old breakfast at a cafe this morning, which went down a treat. And now I'm ready to smash some more miles out and look for somewhere epic to camp along the way. I can tell you now, there's some stunning little plunge pools and waterfalls along this route so far. And depending on what the weather's like in the morning, I might have to take advantage of that. Give my feet a good old soak. So this route basically follows the Stickle Gill all the way up to Stickle Tarn. And then I'm gonna loop around onto Pavey Arc, the first worm right of the day. Well, that's the first little ascent done. We've reached Stickle Tarn, mate. But the way I'm feeling after the last three days, I feel like just going up there and pitching my tent, getting 40 winks. It's only two o'clock in the afternoon. That up there is Pavey Arc, so we'll be going up that. I know there's a sketchy route up that. Can't remember what it's called. Is it Jack's Rake or something? Jake's rake, I don't know. Jake or Jack or something. It's one of them rakes anyway. But I'm not doing that today. I'm just gonna go the steady route all the way around because I've got five worm rights to bag. So I wanna crack on really as quick as I can and get this tent pitched up, not gonna lie. But what an area. What a stunning area. You can see why this is so popular, the Langdales. So I just had a little chill by Stickle Town for a bit. Soaked my feet, that was pretty nice. And then topped up on some water. So I've got one and a half litre of that, plus nearly a litre of Lucas Aid. So that'll do for liquids for Esther tonight. Just need to ascend. Up this big boy now. Pavey Ark. Well, here we are on the summit of Pavey Arc, first worm right of the day and the first of the Langdale Pikes. It's 
stunning views. I'm glad we've got good visibility. Winds are quite strong up here though, so hopefully the audio is still intact. What a pitch that is. A little windbreak front wall. Nice flat ground, just off the summit of Paviark. Maybe one foot future. So Paviark is just behind me. And this next fell we're going up is called, I'm going to butcher this name, Thunakar Knot. Thunakar Knot. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's not actually part of the Langdale Pikes, I don't think. But it's a worm right, so I'm having it while we're here. So it doesn't add too much onto this little circular that I did. So we'll go bag this one next. It's just up there, I don't know if you can see them people. I've got my shades on, obviously, as you can see, so I can't see out on this GoPro screen. So I don't know what you can see in background. Make sure you let me know what sort of videos it is you prefer watching when it comes to camping and that. Do you like the ones where I'm hiking? Quite a lot of the video and then just set up camp at the end. Because obviously while the daylight is here for longer... Whoa, bug. So obviously while the days are longer, as far as the light goes, obviously I'm going to do more hiking. Less tent time. In the winter there's going to be plenty of tent time where I'll be pitching up at like, what, three o'clock in the afternoon or something. It starts getting dark, doesn't it? In the depths of winter. So there'll be plenty of tent time. And that's when I feel like I'm gonna really crack on. We're getting some decent meals cooked and actually bring some ingredients and some different ways of cooking as opposed to just boiling shite all the time. I'm making a spag bowl from scratch tonight. I brought every single ingredient with me. All in the bag, yeah, yeah. Of course, you have. Yes. Oh, that wind, right? That's the second wind, right? Done 2372 feet. Is it Thunder Car Knots? <laughs> Thunder Car, I don't know. Put it up on the screen for you. So, that's the second wind, right? Done the day on to number three. seen it come on there's usually another it's coming now I think is that him or is that a bird no he's there you'll see him then you'll hear the sound Now that, my friend, is sick. What a treat. That's just like a little treat, that. A little Lake District treat. <gasps> triple! Mate, triple decker. What a day. So that's Pike of Stickle. That's another one, I think. And then I think that's the last one, Harrison Stickle. So I'm probably gonna camp up there. You can just see people on top. GoPros are all right for like walking, stability wise, action shots and that. And when you wanna bash them about and they're pretty rugged, can take a lot of shit, but they're not good for sort of long distance landscape views and that, like a wide shot.
That's another Wayne Wright bagged. 2,326 feet, pike of stickle. Whoa, pike of slipple. Not really a clear path up there, there's sort of multiple little scrambly sections. Just make it up as you go along, that's all I do. You just wing it, as long as you're winging it safely. All is good, my friend, my hiking friends. All my, I like to watch hiking and camping friends. Boom. Oh, yes. Couple of nice little grass shelves to pitch on, on this one. That's where I was about 15 minutes ago or something. Might be a bit ambitious that, maybe 20 minutes ago. I've got to go up that base, but no rush now because that, or somewhere on that, it doesn't have to be on the summit. Obviously, it's going to be really busy on the summit, so somewhere on there is where I'm going to be camping, hopefully. Oh, by the way, this is Loft Crag, 2238 feet. 2238. You haven't had a proper day in the lake, about a bit of loose spree. Last push up here now. That's where we were earlier. That one before then. Okay, now. Summit of George Harrison Stickle. But this for a spot. A little flat section. Overlooking Stickle Town. Pavy Arc. Just off the summit of George Harrison Stickle. A few dark clouds rolling in though. They might just look a bit dark because I've got my shades on, but nah, they do. They look dark then. So I'm going to get this tent up already. Hopefully let it dry out a bit. Because it got a bit wet last night. Knackered, man. It's quite early on in the day as well, but I'm well out of way here. Not near any paths. Got some heavy wind due tonight as well. According to the Met Office, like 45 mile an hour. I'll have to check that again. Oh, what about a Brucey bonus at Signal? 5G mate, one bar though, but it'll do. I've already got a few stuff downloaded anyway, so I don't really need internet. Six spot. Good find, you'll always find a pitch. Just gotta keep looking. It only took me like 15 minutes of sort of scoping the edge of George Harrison's stickle. Perfect.
Well, I couldn't have timed that any better. As soon as I've got tent up, it just started raining. Literally like five minutes after putting it up. Perfect timing, eh? I've had a bit of an issue with parking, you know. So, I messaged the old Dungeon Gill on Facebook, like last week or something, because I planned to park there, and I was going to go ahead sort of Pike of Blisco way and do like um, Bofell and all that, and, you know, camp somewhere around there. So I got there this morning, it was Ramo Car Park, and he said, National Trust guy were there, and he goes, there's loads of parking spaces about a mile up the road at, um, what's it called now? Stickle Gill. Yeah, Stickle Gill Car Park. So I drove up there, and then I looked at my map, so I thought, right, now I'm at this car park, let's change my plans. And that's when they decided Langdale Pikes. So I goes to pay, it's one of those pay by phone website machine jobby things. I went online, it said something about connection failed or something, I'll put it up on screen, you'll see it, we're about half 11 this morning. So then I thought, right, I'll keep, I'll, I'll just park the car, I'll make a note of the number on the machine. Half an hour later, I got to like 12 o'clock, I got signal then, or some signal came from somewhere. So I went back on, it had only let me book for 12 hours parking. So my parking now actually runs out at midnight. And then when I went on to try extend it a few hours ago, because I just thought then, no, I don't mind, I'll just extend it. Cause it said extend your session or whatever. And it says it's not available. You can't extend it at this parking spot. That's what do I do now. <laughs> it's tough shit, innit? Runs out at midnight. So I might go back on at midnight. I mean, setting my alarm. Cause I'll probably sleep well before then. Go back on at midnight. Check it. Hopefully it'll let me pay again. If not, I'm just gonna have to risk it for a biscuit. Well, it's tough shit anyway, innit? Just have to deal with it, whatever happens. But I'll let you know it morning, <laughs> what happens. It'll be all right anyway, I'm not asked. It's the end of the day. I'm here, mate. Can't put a price on that. What's happened to the weather, though? Raining. So I've been looking at the Met Office for mountain weather and it's looking like an eventful night, to be honest. You can set your location so it detects where you are and that it'll bring up the closest mountain to you. It's not recognising Harrison Stickle. It's brought up high rays in Langdales, which is literally two miles that way. Well, that way, that way, that way. Could be anywhere. That way. And that is saying, at 11 o'clock tonight, wind gusts of 53 miles per hour and then at midnight 46 and then 50 43 so it's pretty much above 40 till 3 a.m i am glad i brought this tent now because it definitely wasn't saying that earlier this morning so it looks like it could be an eventful night to be honest somewhere here in this pocket on my hilliberg Got a little pair of earplugs. I just keep them in my Hilleberg. I haven't had to use them yet. Oh, I'll tell you what else I got. I totally forgot I bought these. Pringles, mate. Pringles are classic, aren't they? Proper OG salt and vinegar. Can't go wrong with Pringles. Top tier crisp is that. Salt and vinegar as well. LucasAid Zero Pink Lemonade. So I've been carrying some weight today. I had that, that's like 900 mil. And then I've got my two bottles, which are more or less full. Don't look too clean then, do they? That one's had an electrolyte in it, that's why it looks a bit red. But I don't know, it'll be all right anyway. Been carrying them two, so that's a kilo and a half there. My tent weighs over three kilos, it's a big old winter boy. And then I've got all my ingredients for my fresh spaghetti bolognese tonight. I've got everything you could think of spaghetti bolognese. All the appliances, all the utensils, all the flavourings, the seasonings, fresh pasta, tomato, making it all from scratch. Don't know when I'll crack that on though. I can make it really quick though, me. Quicker than most. Couple minutes really. I'm 
gonna be a blustery old night. Caramel latte, mate. Banging. Weather's coming in. Feels like a while since I've been caught out in conditions like this. Well, I say caught out. Obviously, it's been forecast. Love it. Pretty wild out there. Pegs are all good. So we're spot on. Crazy out there actually. Ain't much better in here, kid. <laughs> Food time. Spaghetti bolognese made from scratch. I even opened tin myself. Buzzing. That's nice, Gran. Nice bit of spaghetti bolognese. Authentic Italian luxury cuisine. Right, people, I think it's best if I try to get some sleep whenever I can. Obviously, I say whenever I can, because these gusts keep ripping through. And it just wakes me up, but... Sorry, I'm just using the light off my phone. But anyway, if all crazy happens, I'll bring you back. If not, I'll see you in the morning.
morning. Well, it's a lot calmer today than it was last night. I suppose I best get up, start making a move. It's seven o'clock. Quite a stunning morning, to be fair. Like I say, a lot different from last night. There's already someone up on the summit of Harrison Stickle. They must have got up pretty early today. So I think now it's time to just pack down this shelter and head down safely off side of this mountain. So I've took the top cap off and you can just see why this tent is so strong. You've got these thick 10.25 millimeter poles and yeah, just such a strong design. It's like a geodesic, semi-geodesic design. Oh, it crosses over, super strong. And that's your little vent. So when you've got the top cap on, obviously it covers this vent. So on a night, that's a lot more breathable. Well, not on a night, that's just a lot more breathable in general, but on a night, I tend to roll this down. You can curl that up and loop it there. Decent. So when your Illiberg comes and it's in this massive bag, well, your Illiberg solo anyway, especially at Black Label, it comes in this massive original bag and you're thinking, wow, I can't live, I'm gonna have to lug that about. But really, all you need to do is separate the poles and pegs from the main flight and inner. Just slot the poles in the pole bag down the side of your bag, either in your side pockets, sticking out, or actually inside the bag. I, I always put mine inside, really, unless sometimes I'm leaving and I ain't got room. I can't be asked pissing about. So just slot them down the full length of your bag, and then ditch the original, not ditch, obviously, because I store it in that. But when you're going camping, instead of putting it in the original bag, pack it in a dry bag. So I've got my full tent here and that's with an additional ground sheet in that. That's a Hilleberg Solo black label with a ground sheet in a carry more small dry bag. And then that'll just sit in top of my bag then ready. And then as soon as I get home, I'm gonna take it all out anyway. If it's a nice day and I'm sat in garden, I'll either put the tent up and let it dry out or I've got some like lines hung up in my garage and just leave it hanging in there for a bit. And then that's when, when I'm storing it, I'll put it back in its original bag because you don't want to keep it compressed like that all the time. And then that'll just go on top of this bag. No worries at all. And there we go. And that's everything I need to survive a night on a mountain. Don't need my on bag chest pod on me today so i've just put that in bag as well and that's it leave no trace what a lovely pitch and a lovely spot so we're getting most at battering from wind from this side last night and then i think early hours at morning it sort of switched to that side so i actually had some good protection from obviously the summit of George Harrison Stickle. But yeah, at one point, firm rest were lifting up on that because the wind can whip through and get under your ground sheet or in between your ground sheet and your inner. Really firm rest were lifting up, flapping about and that. That's why I had to go out and double check that the pegs are all in properly. If your pegs are in fine, your tent's not going anywhere. Worst case scenario, one of your poles bend or whatever. As long as it's pinned to the ground, you should survive. <laughs> Oh, and another common mistake is in really high winds, people over tighten the guy lines. They go out and proper tighten them up. You need a bit of slack in them. You don't want them proper drum tight because then you're going to force that pole to either bend or even snap. You're just putting more stress on it. What you really want it to do is have a little bit of give so that when the wind comes flying in, the poles have got a little bit of a bit of a bend to them. Not bend, you know what I mean? Not as much resistance to the wind. So as long as your guy lines are tight enough and the pegs are in properly, that's what's gonna save your ass. Anyway, tent tips 101.
let's get off this mountain because that breeze is coming through. So that's the summit of George Harrison Stickle and then that is Pavey Arc. I'm hoping there's going to be a path that just runs sort of between these two down to Stickle Tarn in that far corner is where I were washing my toes yesterday. So we need to sort of head down towards Stickle Tarn and then we literally just want to be heading down the way we came up following Stickle Gill down to the Stickle Gill car park. Oh, <laughs> speaking of car parks. So midnight last night, I went on because I got a text actually to say my parking has expired um, through that pay, pay by phone app, whatever it's called. Anyway, so I went on and then it let me pay for more because it was the following day. So I just paid again. Anyway, stop chatting shit. Let's um, crack on down this path. You can see another tent down there. Just on the right hand side, bottom of Stickle Tarn. My knees have been so much better this week. It's day four now, I've been here four days. No pain at all, man, touch wood. There's no wood to touch. Well, either way, even if I get some pain now, I know I can manage it to get back to the car. But yeah, so I were on YouTube, obviously, YouTube. Morning, YouTube. I were on YouTube and I was watching this this um, hiking guy, something to do with bad knees and that mountain knees or something. So he's like, oh, sign up to my website, get a free program and all this. So I thought, oh, I'll do it. I'll check it out. So I signed up and then I got this video through to my email address with these hiking knee exercises and stretches. I started doing the first one this sort of this weird stretch thing where you lie on your side, lift your legs up and that. I thought, yeah, yeah, it feels all right, this. So I started doing that for a bit, like three days or something. And I thought, right, what's next video? I went on, you've got to pay. You've got to pay for the next ones. I thought it was a free program. One episode, well, not even an episode, it was a five minute clip. So I've only been doing one one stretch or one exercise all week and if that's cured it obviously it won't have cured it but if that's helped then I'm all for that F*** his program I mean forget his program sorry now I should be grateful really should know what I'm on about I might buy his program but anyway so I feel like it's been working and I've seen on another video about how to walk down a hill if you've got bad knees. You need your ass sticking out like Ryan Sterling and then keep your knees bent. So you're sort of using your ass as a bit of a balance and don't fully extend your leg because that's what's causing obviously the harsh impact on your knees. So if it's working, it's working and it's gonna help me do these longer distances hopefully. This is proper morning ramble time, innit? I gotta keep myself occupied one way or another on the morning. Sun's out though, sun's out, gun's out. Can't believe it's home time now. So it's Thursday, I've been here since Monday. So I'll go home today, chill out, probably have a rest day tomorrow, and then I'm back at Lakes again at weekend with my mate Sam. Not sure what area we're gonna visit. Yeah, looking forward to that. So after four days of solo, I'll be out with a pal this weekend. So I should be good, making plenty of content for you guys. Obviously I work full time, so whenever I get a break with work, that's it. We're out, making most of it. Hiking when we can, filming when we can. And then when I get home, editing when I can. I've got a lot to edit on this trip. Right, I think I've lost the path. Just started raining again. Typically, I took my waterproof off about 20 minutes ago. But I'll be right. On his way back now, aren't we? So a bit of rain won't do any harm on t-shirt.
Not a bad little pitch, is it, that? Really? So this is sort of stage one of the hike done, as far as today is concerned. So we've come down off Harrison Stickle. Looks like a big old lump from here. Looks a beauty. So we're down at Stickle Town, and now we've just got to follow Stickle Gill, which is sounding a bit more ferocious than it was yesterday. We had a lot of rain last night. Right guys, nearly back at the car park now, so it's probably a good time to wrap up this video on what an epic three nights it's been in the Lake District. We've done Coniston's Magnificent Seven, we've done a Helvellyn Summit Camp, as well as Striding Edge and Swirl Edge, and we've just done the Langdale Pikes, and witnessing some pretty hectic weather. So make sure you give the video a like, drop a comment, hit subscribe, and if you do want to support the channel even more, you can buy me a coffee or donate to the PayPal. I'll put links in the description and I'll pin the links in the top comment on this video. It just goes towards a bit of fuel to help get me to the mountains, pay for some diesel, pay for some food, all that good shit. Right, thank you for watching. You've been watching Good Block Outdoors. I'm Liam and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out in a bit.